Right, good morning, welcome to the show. Um, today, the video is going to be different. As you can see, we're going to go out hunting. We're going to head up into that valley now. I'm on a wine farm in an undisclosed location, and today we're protecting grapes. Now, we're going to be shooting the ultimate varmint today. That's a baboon. Now, if you're a bunny hugger, this video is not for you or a vegan. So, why are we managing the population of the baboons? First of all, they've got no natural predators anymore. The leopards can't manage them. To my right here, there's an unlimited food supply. I'm gonna show you guys a picture of the farm, maybe overlay some drone footage. This time of the year, there's so much food, and with no natural predators, the size of the baboon population is absolutely booming. Today we're going to try and manage that. So the other problem is these things are, and this is why I say they're the ultimate varmint. They are so smart. It's crazy. They'll see you coming. That's why I'm out here pretty early in the morning. I'm going to get a good vantage point and hopefully they'll come through my way. There's a good chance we're going to sit in the mountain for five, six hours today and not get anything. That's kind of the risk we run. But I'm packed, I got my camel back, lots of water. I'm gonna also try film this for you guys. Um, so hunting baboons one is extremely difficult as it is. Filming hunting baboons is a whole different story. I'm gonna be doing today's mission solo, completely on my ace. So hopefully I'll be able to at least record something. I've got my Swarovski BTX spotting scope. The rifle I'm shooting today, 6.5 Creedmoor. I'm shooting 130 grain. ELDMs, um, 20 inch 65 Creedmoor, I'm shooting suppressed and I've got a Swarovski X5 on the top in mill which is quite nice. So a little bit different for me, the reticle is obviously different to what I shoot normally so I think I'm just going to dial my shots today if there's time. The prop, the, and this is what I was saying earlier, as soon as the first shot goes, they're gone and they won't be back for, you never know when they come back, they could be back the next day but sometimes they come back a week later or they hit a different part of the farm or a farm next door. So they're really smart and they've literally got, well not literally, but they've basically got Swarovski eyes. Now I'm going to hike up the mountain uh, while you guys watch the intro and uh, later I'll explain to you why it is they cause so much damage to these farms, especially during this time of the year and specifically to the crops. Anyway, I've got quite a hike. Luckily it's still a little bit overcast and hopefully it stays that way. So we're going to be pretty quiet doing this video. It's not going to be a whole bunch of talking, but hopefully we'll be able to at least get one. Um, rifles dialed. It's, it, oh, I thought I heard one barking. Hopefully I'll be able to record this, but they go like in the mountains so you could actually hear them when they're coming. Um, they've actually got some strategies too, how they move. And uh, I'll explain that for you guys in the States that I have not seen. Oh, that's a bird, sorry, I was thinking I'm hearing a call again. Okay, let's do it. Enjoy the intro, I'll see you up there. I've heard them screaming. They're here. I haven't seen them yet. I'm gonna try get some video of them on the BTX for you. And then plan our next move. Right, so what we have here is the lookout, or as we call him in Afrikaans, the Brandwag. He will sit here for as long as it takes to confirm to the rest of his troop that it's safe for them to come down the mountain. So he might have spotted me because he's looking directly at me, but I'm sitting right behind a bush and you can see the view through the BTX is a little bit foggy because I'm kind of recording through the leaves. I've just ranged him at 800 yards. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm hoping 
that I can move to somehow get into a better position, but they've kind of got me stuck here because he's got a vantage point on me no matter where I go. So I actually don't know exactly what to do. Uh, we're going to chill out here, wait for them to move. Maybe as soon as they go sort of behind this ridge, then um, I can get an opportunity to move. But he's literally just sitting and surveying this whole valley. Um, I've heard... Um, the other one's playing behind him because it's pretty quiet out here and uh, yeah, you can hear their movements definitely. So I'm hoping he hadn't spotted me and uh, I'm glad I got some video of him for you guys because often these things happen super quick and um, yeah, as I said, they're hyper, hyper, hyper aware. So to get a view of them like this is not something you see every day. Okay, so some more glassing has revealed a whole bunch of them. Let me zoom this in a little. Okay, so some more glassing has revealed a whole bunch of them on the next ridge line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, uh, twelve, thirteen. I'm gonna have to do the tension on this tripod a little bit. And then pan over to the next hill. So they're making their way down from this mountain. Look at them running. So the trick with these guys is never to shoot the big male. Because then it just turns into an orgy for the other young males. And the troop size just keeps expanding. It's like cutting the head off a dragon. Look at these guys cruising. And those guys are still over a thousand yards away. If we pan over, I think there was someone here earlier. So they're coming through this valley down here and onto this ridge where we saw the lookout earlier. Let's find them. Here they are. And there's a couple of more. Whoops, sorry. There's a couple of more here where the lookout was. He's moved down a little bit. So you'll see they make their way across this valley down here. I don't know if you could hear that, but they're calling. As I mentioned earlier, they've kind of got me cornered. And hopefully if they flank towards the left all the way this way, then I can flank up the right and try gain height on them and sneak in behind them. Because that's going to give me the best possible opportunity to get more than one um, but if you shoot more than one baboon you're pretty damn good We're shooting suppressed today so hopefully that helps a little bit sorry for the shakiness I'm doing my best but at a thousand yards and I'm sort of hand holding this tripod it's pretty bizarre Here we go, here we go. That's very amusing. They all seem to fall there. That's really funny. Okay, so here's an update. There's a stupid bird and his friend who've been screaming for the last 10 minutes and the baboons are super alert because the birds didn't know I was here and they walked up right behind me and now they freaked out and they've been going on like that for quite some time. <sighs> so now I'm conflicted. This rifle I have here is really accurate. And I've got a shot at about 700 meters. There's no real wind. So 
I'm just gonna bring this closer because I don't know how much you can hear with this stupid bird. This thing, I'm, they might just shoot him. So I don't know if I should try and change my position. Because ideally, I want to get more than one, or I could shoot one long distance, set up the spawning scope, and hopefully get that on video. Whereas the alternative, they're moving. The alternative would be to try either sit tight. Hopefully they don't walk up right on top of me. Oh, that thing's driving me insane. So hopefully they don't walk up right on top of me. Or if they push left, I might be able to sneak up this valley and sneak behind them. And if I get the higher ground, I should be able to get more than one. The problem is, sometimes there's a, another lookout that you don't see. And as you start flanking me, he just does one bark. And they're gone. Hunting baboons is exceptionally difficult and I think the best bet is just going to be to hang tight and sort of base my movements based on what they're doing. But I've been, I've been watching them the whole time, seeing some funny stuff. As you guys have seen, I, I saw multiple wipeouts that I didn't manage to record, but I had a good chuckle. So at least there's some entertainment. But this bird is driving me insane. And it's not flying away. I like lob this stick in its direction. And it flies away, but then walks back here. So I'm thinking maybe they have some eggs or something at the back here. But it's super annoying. And I don't think the baboons will move closer while the bird's doing this. So, I don't know. We'll see. Okay, update. We had a slight problem. We had a farm worker drive up with the tractor and they've been sitting here for some time. It's amazing how they just walk up to each other, have a shag and then move on like 30 seconds later. It's just a waiting game now. These guys are about 340. But as I said, I want to try flank them. I could take this shot right now. But I don't wanna. The wind is picking up and blowing towards me, so I'm good. Oh, I hope they don't spook now. This is such a sketchy situation because if they see you or see anything they don't like, they're gone. And that opportunity for the day is gone. They won't be back within range. They'll bolt all over the mountain and I'll be gone. I'm so tempted to just take this shot. Uh, man, oh man, what should I do? So to put this into perspective for you guys while we wait, this is where the big bunch of them are. And I'm going to pan over to where the lookout is sitting. So I have to go all the way across this valley to find my landmark, start panning up. Not in this thing. He's sitting right over there. I'll put in an arrow so you can see him. And I'll show you sort of a wide angle of this. 
So you could see he's sitting about 600 meters back, just keeping an eye over this whole valley. This is what makes them so, so difficult to hunt. It's that guy, you gotta track that guy and the front guy. Okay, so they have flanked me to the left, or I've let them flank me to the left. I'm unable to see them, but I can hear them. They're definitely entering the vineyards and doing damage as we speak. It's a difficult decision, the wind's come up. I'm thinking of pushing into this valley where we've just seen them all morning at the right ridge here. And then hopefully working my way across and trying to see if I can get a shot. The problem is once they bolt, they can run in any direction. But I'm hoping they'll run my way. Let's see if we can push up this valley. I'm hoping this is the right decision, guys. Before you continue watching, what would you do? A, flank around the bottom and see if you can get a shot, but then you're gonna be shooting uphill. Um, or B, go around that way. I'm gonna go for B. Let me know what you would have done. Sprint up the hill. There was a farm worker on his fucking tractor and he scared them away. So they ran right by where I was at. I'm about 300 meters above them. I'm gonna keep an eye on them from here. If they run into the woods, I've got shots on them across this valley. If they work their way back into the vineyards, I've got shots on them there. Try sit up. Okay, they're pushing back to the vineyards. <sighs> That's a great sign. Holy shit balls. I was dying. I'm gonna phone the farmer. See if we can get the stupid guy with the tractor out of here. I tell you what, not often you surprise these guys. Um, where are you going, fella? I've got some lead with your name on it. Keep an eye on them. Tell you what, it's never ever. Sorry, there's a lot of fire going out. I've never ever gotten the jump on baboons and had a high ground on them. And the wind is perfect. Man, oh man, I was sitting up to get some video for you guys of them in the vineyards. I know for a fact that I've got some more on my right hand side parallel with me on the mountain and I tucked away behind these rocks here and I've got cover to this side so they're down here oh frick they're pushing into the <sighs> they're pushing into the into the forest and there down there some fresh baboon poop over here so I definitely got the jump on there oh guys that happened super fast I shot one down there in the head. Um, the f***ing guy on the tractor chased them away. You can do everything right, guys. But, you know, if, the, if something is out of your control, you've got to make deal with a bad situation. I was trying to get that on video for you. But my whole plan got wrecked. Um, I got a few shots off. I shot that one in the head down there. Um, and I shot another one while it was running up that way, that way. Wow, super bummed. They were pushing right towards me and this freaking guy with his tractor was just moseying up and down. And we told them I was gonna be here shooting today. Ah, frustrating, but still got two baboons. So yeah, guys, once again, sorry. I was shooting off this rock. The big man is down there somewhere over there. Now, in an ideal world, you don't really want to shoot the biggest male. He wasn't the biggest one. I'm going to go walk over there and see if we can find that one. I put two rounds in him while he was running. 
the first round sort of hitting him in the back of the leg and then the next one I could hear was a solid thud. When I popped this male down here, I could actually see his head opening up as I shot him. I could see the pink, which means you're riding the recoil pretty good. But man, I was out of breath when I ran up here. Holy smokes. By the way, if this is your first time watching my channel, please do consider subscribing. Right, I guess now let's walk down this side, see if we can fix, fetch that guy over there. Um, and uh, I'm just gonna do some little bit of glassing of these treetops, cause sometimes we have one or two that stick around in the treetops cause they think they're safe. We can maybe pop them if we find them. What I thought was more baboons on that side was just a false alarm. But I'm gonna scan all these treetops, just make doubly sure we're not leaving any potential guys behind here. And uh, then hike down and show you guys what these fuckers look like up close. Oh, got him, got him, got him. Shit, I'm standing on the ridge line six, 620 meters. Okay. Man, oh man. 620 meters with 130 grain ELDM on the ridge line. Woo! Well done, little rifle. You the man. I lost my bipod during this whole engagement over the rock here. I'm pretty sure I broke my leg kneeling on the sharpest little ridge that was available. There is no way that I'm walking up there. No way. About 30 minutes worth of hiking later, I found our 600 and something meter baboon. This thing is monstrous. Monster. We hit him. Oh, it's another big male. Um, I'm not quite sure where we hit him. Damn. What a shot. Oh. I can hear more of his friends calling on this top ridge line. I left all my kit down there. I wasn't gonna carry all that up. So luckily I've got, I can see it. So I'm gonna hike back down there and then go, go and track that one. I know where the other male is, but let's go. Let's hike down and track that one. Oh, oh shit. Right, so situation report, I've hiked down, I've left the spotting scope and the other stuff down at the other baboon. I'm gonna track this one now. I've come onto the blood trail. Now, a wounded baboon is very dangerous. Um, I don't think this one got very far. There's a ton of blood. Um, the forest turns into this super thick stuff over here. I'm gonna flip the camera around and let me show you what we're working with. So the blood trail pretty much starts here. Um, at least from what I can tell. So this is where I put the first round in him at about 400 meters. Um, the lead, I don't know if you guys can see the blood, but there's a lot of blood. The lead you're shooting on these guys while they're running full speed is probably five, six baboons. Um, so we're not quite, I've already traced this a little bit out so I know where we're going. But look at the amount of blood this guy's leaking. Um, lots of blood and then this is where I put the second round in him right by this rock so you can immediately see the direction of the trail and everyone was running in this way to head up behind this peak here and then he immediately hooks a right so this is where we sort of have to start getting our woods about us so blood's going in here then temporarily I lose the blood so let's see I'm just gonna switch around 
keep my rifle in my in my dominant hand so if need be I can just drop this phone and get on my gun but there's a little bit of blood over here that's gonna sort of the close-up. Oh my word, look how much blood is on us. This bush is covered, look how red those bushes are over there. That's all blood. Oh, he can't be very far now. Look at this. Okay, it's getting really thick now. Um, this side sort of goes in this direction. Okay, he's down. He's down. He didn't get very far. Uh, I'm just gonna back around this big bush over here. He's definitely dead. Uh, I'm put my rifle down. Let's see if I can get you guys in. Um, they're super faulty. I don't want to touch this guy. They carry a bunch of diseases. And guys, these things are pests. Not only do they absolutely wreck crops. Let's just double check. You there, bro? Where did I hit him? Um, let's see if I can flip him over. So as expected, I think that first shot was somewhere here in the back. Oh, he just made a noise. shot him sort of here in the back and then the next shot oh yeah yeah that's that's game over right there guys not the best shots but at the end of the day this thing is booking it flat out and they'll probably do 40 miles an hour they're quick these things um but yeah one baboon down let's go find that other big one right guys here we have the male um, sensitive viewers look away it's quite graphic um, this was again we're on sitting on that ridge over there shooting him while he's running towards us I did accommodate for the difference in the shooting angle and I hit him slap bang where I wanted to uh, right above his eyes while running so I'm pretty proud of that it's a good shot um, look at the teeth on these guys. Those things will rip sheep apart. What they do with the sheep, um, even while the sheep is alive, they'll rip the baby sheep apart, eat their stomachs, and then move on to the next ones. We're going to pull this guy into the ditch, and uh, something will come and finish him off this evening. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, successful hunt. Super difficult to do this solo. I maybe need someone if you guys want to see more of these this is the season i mean there's so many farmers here that can't shoot well enough to manage these guys so they're asking me to come and assist uh the farmers do have permits to shoot or manage the population of the baboons um so yeah if you want to see more of these videos let me know and um, perhaps i can get that seven millimeter of mine dialed in and uh, we can reach out and touch them from a bit further distances. I can still hear the other ones barking at me, but uh, we got three and uh, that's good for today. Thank you very much for watching. Again, about 60% of you who watch these videos aren't subscribed. So please make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the notification bell, comment down below which option you would have chosen. Our option worked out well. I think if we pushed option A, we might've actually been spoiled by the guy on the tractor. But yeah, again, we can only do what we can do and whatever happens, happens. I think we managed it well considering um, and we put some great rounds on target. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Have a fantastic 2020. And again, I appreciate every single one of you watching these videos. Let me know in the comments down below if you wanna see more of these. 
and we'll try and make it happen. It's quite expensive for me to come out. This is about a three hour drive for me to get to these locations. So if you want to support the channel, I've also linked my Patreon down below. Anyway, guys, let me get this sucker squared away. Make sure rifle safe, pack everything away, then head hike back up the mountain, get some of my kit that's down there and then head back to my truck. I want to also thank the guys from West Valley Suzu for hooking me up with a freaking fantastic ride. Guys, you rock. Thank you very much for supporting Impact Shooting. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.